Okay, so uh, these are the 2005 problems from your first haiku. You know, I think it was titled nc.pdf. Again, consult the pictures. I thought this was a pretty easy problem. Letter A, remember the point of intersection is going to be the whole calculator answer. Don't round the point of intersection uh, and it's whatever that irrational number is. Part A, find the area of R. That's pretty straightforward. Remember, you can write G of X minus F of X. There's nothing wrong with that because they give you F of X and G of X in the problem. If you want to, you can write the whole thing. Uh, the actual G of X and the actual F of X. They'll accept either, so keep that in mind. And again, three decimal places rounded or truncated, so 0 0.064 or 0 0.065 would be correct. So this is a pretty straightforward question. Probably the hardest part of this problem is typing it in your calculator, so practice that. Letter B, the area of S, again, uh, the point of intersection is now the lower limit, the irrational number. Again, you can write out f of x minus g of x or the actual functions. And again, practice writing this out and you get 0 0.410. Don't forget the zero. If it's a third number, then that's what it is. So don't write 0 0.41, write 0 0.410. Letter C is a pretty standard washer problem. Again, you're adding 1 because you're rotating the solid about the line y equals negative 1. Pi times the integral from the irrational number 0 0.178218 to 1 of the function plus 1 squared minus the function plus 1 squared which of course you can write the functions out if you want to. I'd practice this one because you get an answer of 1.451 but then don't forget the pi. So again that's how I would write the answers and you don't have to write cubic units or square units in these problems because they don't give you the units in this problem. This was a pretty standard question and you know I would think you did well on that one. I thought the second one was probably the hardest one. Uh, that's why I put an asterisk next to it. The second one, statistically back in 2005, I know it's 15 years ago, but this was probably one of the harder questions on the AP test, and the average score was like a 3 out of 9. So obviously if you can get two parts of this right, you're certainly going to do fine, but part A is a pretty standard question. Again, consult the question. The tide is taking away sand, and then there's a pumping station putting in sand. So letter A, it's the integral from 0 to 6 of R of T, okay, the tide taking it away. So this time you do have to include units. So the integral of a rate of change is quantity, and that's why the answer is cubic yards. So you do get a point for the correct unit, so keep that in mind. Again, I'd practice this. You can write the actual equation for R of T instead of just R of T, whatever you want to do there. And it's the integral from 0 to 6 because it's how much sand was taken away during the first six hours. Question B is really the fundamental theorem of integral calculus. So if you can kind of understand this, you'll be fine with this type of question. There's initially 2,500 cubic yards, so you're adding that integral 2,500 plus the integral from 0 to any time t of the amount of sand being pumped minus the amount of sand being taken away. The key to this problem is knowing that the upper limit is any time t and inside the integral is s of x minus r of x dx. It's got to be the different variable. And that's essentially the fundamental theorem of integral calculus. So if you put 0 to x or if you put something different, you're probably not going to get full credit. I would just keep it from this 0 to any time t. A lot of people forgot the 2,500, but that's how much sand was there before this experiment took place. So, you know, that to me is probably a, a really important question, and it, it certainly would help you understand this better. And then, of course, the derivative by the fundamental theorem is substituting the upper limit into the integral, which is why y prime of t is s of t minus r of t. And that should take care of part c, because that question is, when is the rate, what is the rate of change at time 4? So keep in mind the rate of change at time 4 is the amount of sand being put onto to the beach minus the amount of sand being taken away. 
And one of the things I would do here is to make things really easy for you is I would have typed in under y sub 1, you know, the r of t, like whatever it was. Um, and the y sub 2, like whatever it was. So keep that in mind that if you type them in your calculator, then you can just type it in here and get the answer that they're looking for. Uh, again, units for full credit, that's, a, that's a, keeping that in mind, yard, cubic yards per hour, because it's a rate of change. So, I don't know, my students over the years may have struggled with parts B and C because of the whole concept of the fundamental theorem. So I would just keep that in mind here. And then part D, I put a double star here because I thought that was just a really hard question. Statistically, it was, one of the, it was one of the hardest questions of recent years, even though I'm going back 15 years. But the key to this question is you have to test the endpoints. So I'm setting the derivative equal to zero to find critical points, but I also have to test the endpoints. At time zero, I have 2,500 cubic yards, okay? So using my calculator, S of t minus R of t equals zero only at time 5.117 whatever. So again, don't round that. And I'll explain that in a minute. Remember, don't round the point of intersection. Uh, I then test it, okay? So what's the integral from zero to that irrational number of the amount of sand being pumped in minus the amount of sand being taken away? That turned out to be negative seven point something. Again, your calculator will help you here. Taking that 7 away from the 2,500 gives you 2,492.370 or 369 cubic yards. And then I also have to test the integral from 0 to 6 because I have to test the endpoints. And that gave me an, a, a negative 6, which will not give me um, less than 2,492. So again, test that out. You'll find that to be a pretty hard problem. But the answer is at time 5.118, that's how many cubic yards of sand you would have had. The last problem I thought was pretty standard. I, I kind of feel like this question would be one my students would really handle um, on an AP test. So, you know, that's just what's going to happen. You're going to get a couple of questions you can jump all over, and then you have to really work your way through the harder ones. But finding the area under the curve from time 0 to time 24, whether it's by trapezoids or areas of rectangles and adding to triangles, I should get 360 meters. And they are going to give you a point for making the units. So the integral of a velocity is a quantity. So that's why the answer is 360 meters, OK? Uh, part B, uh, what's V prime of 4? Well, v prime of 4 is the acceleration at time 4, but that doesn't exist because the graph, if you look at the graph for this problem, that's where the graph meets at a corner. Now, the APs are not going to accept you saying the graph meets at a corner. You have to show the slope from the left is not the same as the slope from the right. The limit as x approaches 4 from the left of the derivative graph is positive, and the limit as x approaches 4 from the right of the velocity graph is 0, so that graph just... Does ha has a derivative that doesn't exist. The velocity prime at 20, which is the acceleration at time 20, is negative 5 halves because that's the slope of the line from time 16 to time 24. And don't forget the units for full credit for acceleration, quantity over time squared. So again, I felt that that question was pretty standard. Question C, they want you to make a piecewise function for the acceleration graph. And that's not so bad, because basically the slope of the line segment from time 0 to time 4, however you want to write it, is 5, and the slope from time 4 to 16 is 0, and the slope from time 16 to time 24 is negative 5 halves. I would probably suggest you writing this as your time interval, just to clarify that you know what you're talking about to the AP grader, so keep that in mind and emphasize that the derivative doesn't exist, the acceleration doesn't exist at those times where the graph meets at a corner. Question D, the average rate of change of the velocity graph from time 8 to 20 is negative 5 sixth. Again, I'm finding the slope from, you know, again, here's a quick graph, time 8 to time 20 
that slope is negative 5 sixth meters per second squared, remember, okay? Um, can I use the mean value theorem? No, because the derivative doesn't exist at time 16, and the, and the mean value theorem, the function has to be continuous and differentiable in the entire interval. So it's not at time 16, so I cannot use the mean value theorem. That's a good question. I think a lot of students probably forgot this when they were justifying it. Um, it's just something to remember when you're talking about the mean value theorem. Anyway, I thought these questions were pretty straightforward. So um, I'll have more next time, but those were the questions from 2005 on your handout.